Our school is, our school, our parish we call it, is on seven acres and it uh, consists of seven buildings and three of which are used as classroom. We have one main um, building for our, our classrooms and we're one class per grade level. And, and then we have the computer lab that was at one point in the convent, the old convent doesn't exist anymore, it's, it's called a ministry center. And then also our hall which is used for music and it will be used for art as well. Our, our parish, our school con includes 262 students, which is preschool as well. We have 20 faculty, 5 staff, and 750 um, uh, parish families. So um, our parish is led by Father Mal, and thank you Father Mal, our pastor, for being here today. He's been extremely supportive of, of our project here, as well as our school in general. Uh, we're both new to the community, so as newbies, we knew that we had um, a lot of uh, work to do ahead of us. Uh, Bob Horn, and I, this, this gentleman is just amazing. I can't tell you enough about him. He's a, one of our church leaders, and he has been just so, um, just so pro in getting us going and, and just a strong advocate, and he's just He's our angel, as I, as I refer to him. And Bill Schott, he's over here, sitting very humbly there. And he's our finance administration uh, administrative assistant to Father Mel. I am the school principal. And Jeff Pike, right here, he is our IT support and also one of our church volunteers. I have two of my staff, uh, my, my faculty with us. I have Kami Ochoa, and she is our first grade teacher. And, um, and Tara Gabriel, she's our athletic director. And Anna Kukul, who is one of our parents, she's also the director of our, of our garden. Um, you know, we've all mentioned Pope Francis and uh, his call to us to be responsible stewards of the earth. And with that, we really thought about our vision and, uh, you could change it, our vision. And yes, we are stewards of God's creation. And with that, Sino St. Columba has dedicated, is dedicating themselves to striving to building a community that truly understands the meaning of what Pope Francis is trying to convey to us as Catholics. And not only that, as evangel evangelizers of, of our church, and understanding the value of sustainability and, and cultivating a global awareness of conservation. Basically, this is just, it's just not our school, it's just not our homes, it's what are we going to do to preserve our earth for future generations. And that's the big picture that we would also, that we're thinking about and would also like to reinforce into our school and again create uh, a way of life, you know, not just uh, this, this mission right now for this project. So with that, it is our endeavor, I'm sorry, okay. That's okay, it's okay, go on. All right, so our big goals. Um, uh, right now we have our, we have trash pickup at three times a week and we are looking at, um, at moving it to twice a week with our recyclables being collected one time a week. Uh, currently um, we are at 25% uh, waste recycling and we began at 18% uh, four months ago. And in October, we are, our, our goal is to reach 40% of waste recycling. And for our recycling program uh, itself, we are looking at our, we have bottles and cans right now that we're recycling, as well as, of course, our paper goods. And again, it's, it's uh, a matter of behavioral change. And that, I, I think, and all of it looking at behavioral change is gonna be the biggest challenge with um, implementing um, this project. 10% uh, reduction of, of electrical uh, energy. Again, we um, are looking at, we're looking at, we've looked into two companies right now to replace our school uh, with LED lighting, and we'd like to have our, all of our school in our parish with LED lighting by fall of 2015. Uh, we have found that our computer lab, because it is in bad, <laughs> it's in need of an upgrade, that our computer lab is, um, I guess, the culprit for the use of the most energy in our school. So with that, um, and we'll talk about it a little bit further into the presentation of uh, what were our master plan and how we're planning on pursuing correcting that. 
Uh, we have a school's garden. And with that, um, our teachers are teaching sustainability um, in, in reference to our school garden and to our school. Uh, right now, we're breeding these red worms, okay, for composting. And um, that we, that we, there, we soak the, the castings, or worm poop, as they call it, okay? And, and, it, and it's used as a tea, not to drink, of course, you know, but for liquid fertilizer. And so that is what is really helping our garden uh, become more, it's flourishing with it as well. Uh, our curriculum um, to educate our students and staff on sustainability, I'm going to have, um, Cammie's going to speak about it in, um, as we go further along on our presentation here. Okay, um, with our business case, uh, we have a finance committee at our school. And with our finance committee, we, we, um, we brought to them um, our concerns about the energy usage in our school and the amount of money that we are spending on a monthly basis for water and electricity and, wa and our waste. And we realized that that was way above what we should be spending. And that's when we decided that we would hire an architect, well, pro bono, by the way. Well, not the architect, but we would look at getting some architects into our campus to see, <laughs> evaluate, and how can we make our, our campus more environmentally friendly. We also have, we're fortunate to have four uh, pro bono uh, professionals working with us, two marketing and two grant writers, and one fundraising uh, professional who is going to help us put together our master plan so that we can come up with the finances that will allow us to um, install our LED lightings, replace our computer lab with, uh, I mean, upgrade our computers, and as well as um, uh, our, our yard. We have never really had a yard with any kind of turf whatsoever in the 51 years that the school has been in existence. So, and again, the concern was when the school was established because 51 years ago there was another water drought. And the sisters that established the school decided that it would be better for them if they did not add grass. Well, you know, we haven't been able to have really, we've had a lot of injuries on the campus in those 52 years and a lot of concern from parents. So now we have this a really strong campaign that we are um, uh, looking at raising enough money that will replace, will install artificial turf, as well as uh, upgrade our computer lab. And those are our short-term goals for fall 2015. Uh, we are looking at installing our waterless urinals. And um, you know we realize that um, the current ones that we have they, they were probably installed when the school was opened, and, um, and they're not cost efficient, first of all. And not only that, you know, we found that the kids, the boys like to play with them a lot, so we know what's happening with the water in there. Uh, again, uh, we're upgrading to LED lighting, and um, we are looking at reducing the power of consumption with IT devices. We're looking at saving again through trash reduction, Again, our landscape design is um, going to reduce water usage. We also have a proposal that uh, we can receive $3.50 per square foot for the um, grass that we have in front of the school, and we're looking at removing all of that. And with the money we receive from that, we can add it to our, um, um, our um, plan for our turf. Okay, so let's move on to that. And so now I'm going to have Bob and Cami come up and talk about what we've done so far and our accomplishments. Okay, I'll do the accomplishments. Um, I'm not going to read everything on here, but um, what we're doing as a school, we've done three things as a teacher that we're really focusing on for the students. My notes right here. Um, three things we're really looking into involving the students would be recycling um, our garden, and then for the more for the teachers than the students is the behavior changes. Um, and I know for myself, I just will forget or not really think about turning off my computer and printer at the end of the day, turn off the lights when we're not in there. 
So I'm a first grade teacher and we have a student of the day that does all the jobs. So they would be, they're the ones that are in charge of making sure the lights are turned off. They remind us about the computers, which they love to do. Um, upper grades, the teachers take care of that. But we all realize it's a behavior change for us. The second thing is recycling. <clears throat> As Rose mentioned before, um, we, a couple months ago, we had an assembly and, and had our, our recycling trash disposals, daily disposal, and they came out and gave us boxes and stickers, and we had student council put on an assembly. Really got the students involved um, on recycling items that they see around the school. So like their hot lunch containers, are they recyclable or not, things like that. Um, and it really got the students excited. We had a little contest on decorating your bin, which you'll see up there soon on our um, slides. And then, um, as I think Rose had mentioned, our recycling has improved. It was 18%, it's up to 25, and we want to be at least 40% by the end of the um, school year, thank you, of next year, or December. And then um, on recycling, we also had a rummage sale where everything was a dollar, and um, that was for all reusable items. And then the third thing is our garden, which we're really proud of because we had a, a parent, Annika Kool, who could not be here today, but she started four years ago when her daughter first started at St. Columba and really promoting a garden. We had a yard, we had dirt, but that was it. And she has, um, in four years, really transformed it. We have um, a butterfly garden where we, especially first grade, we will get the little containers and let the butterfly, you know, see the stages of the butterfly from the from the caterpillar to the cocoon to actually being butterflies, and they keep coming back every year, and you'll see all these cocoons um, in the yard and on the building, too. <laughs> um, a lot of our garden was, was um, put together with, with donations. Men's Club is really big on helping us out, doing the raised beds. Um, of course, we have all the free child labor that we, <laughs> we need, <laughs> which is great, because and the kids loved it. Anna was telling me last night, she said we'd have manure and dirt, and they would come in and they would mix it up and they were getting dirty and sweaty. They loved it, absolutely loved it. Uh, my first graders, we have two composting things. We have a compost bin in the um, garden where we put our um, food items. And we also, in half the classrooms, we have little, the worm bins, the red worm bins. And the kids love it. They, they, um, they can look at it. They won't touch it, but um, we do play around with it with you know, putting the food in and put different corners and seeing where the, um, where the worms are. They're these red worms that, we, that Anna got us. Um, she says also, I said, how are you doing all this with financially? And she says a lot of it, she talks to people and she gets, she's at Home Depot and she got some free seeds because she was talking to somebody at Home Depot about the school garden. Um, she also contacted a master gardener and she gets lots of emails and great ideas from that. There was a workshop at Del Mar uh, Fairgrounds that she went to that she got a lot of information about. Um, the main goal for us, I think as a teacher, is teach our students um, about gardening and what does it take to run a garden and, and how you can do it small, you know, small little pot garden or if you have a yard. Um, again, our Eagle Scout put in the drip system, uh, the fence around it. Um, our composting bin in the yard, in the garden itself with the food, that probably won't be ready to use um, until the beginning of the school year, next year. And the little phrase that sixth grade is in charge of collecting the food, and they call it doing the rot thing, is their little phrase. And then our composting bins that they have in the classroom with the worms, we should be able to use all of that um, uh, by the end of the school year, maybe even probably next month. And then one more thing, to keep it sustainable is, um, besides getting donations, is maybe planting things, plants, and then selling them, putting them in pots and selling them, maybe the pots that the kids decorate and selling them. So something like that to help raise funds for our garden. I'm more the nuts and bolts type person to this this group, so we'll just quickly go ahead to uh, the uh, this summary slide. Go to the next one. Mm -hmm. We'll just go you through this the six zero to six months um, initiatives here. Um, replace all ex exterior, interior and exterior lights with LEDs. Uh, we we hired a company that uh, 
Gray Bar from, I think they're up in LA. They came down and took a look at all the lighting fixtures we had and, and light bulbs we use and came up with these figures for us. Uh, projected cost for us is about $17,000. Angel cost savings about almost five thousand dollars from that just by going to LEDs. It even gave us a you know the CO2 saved on that, which is kind of amazing. We didn't know how to do that, but they gave us that. So another nice thing about that program is they allow you to use the money that you save. Say you, it costs you a thousand dollars a month for for your energy costs right now, and you you get it down to about six hundred dollars a month. They'll allow you to use that four hundred dollars to pay off the the. Uh, the, the total cost. So there's the out-of-pocket cost to you is almost zero. So it's really kind of neat. You do have an interest rate you got to pay a little bit to, but I thought that was really kind of kind of neat way. We don't have to actually pay for it ourselves. Um, replace old journals. Um, like uh, like uh, Rose said, they're 50 years old, so they're just terrible. So we had a company come in through our, our maintenance is our um, janitorial supply company. They, they brought in a vendor, Waterless. They came in and said, we can put another one in here, um, save you 30,000 gallons a year. And uh, the cost savings on that is $168 a year. Not a whole lot. Like uh, Dee was talking about, the water isn't that expensive right now, but it, it will continue to go up. And the nice thing about that, there's a $200 rebate for each one of these devices. We have nine of them in the boys' bathroom. So, uh, it actually only costs us about $100 to, to buy one of these. So it's pretty, pretty good. Uh, increase our recycling to 40%. Like Rose was saying, right now we have trash picked up three times a, a week and recycle bin once. We want, because the city wants us to get to a 40% rate, we want to get that down to about two times a week for trash, once a week for, for recyclables. And, um, and, we already see the benefits. When we first started the project uh, about five months ago, our recycle bin was only two yards. So that was thing. That thing would get filled up quickly, and then all the rest of the stuff until the week, until Thursday when it's picked up, was gone into the trash. So now we have a three-yard recycle bin. So now it contains all the recyclables that we're doing right now. So we're not putting anything back into the trash. So we should be able to reduce our trash pickup to two days a week by summertime. Um, the behavioral environment there of, of having the teachers turn off the classroom. <clears throat> we did a, a study on that. And if we just take one hour a day out of, the, out of the seven hours or eight hours a day that their lights are on for the classes, the one hour during the, um, the lunchtime, we can save ourselves $200 a, month, a year. So it's just little things like that. It doesn't cost us anything, but the benefits of it are, are pretty good. And the printers and, and PCs. I mean, we have a computer lab with 25 uh, computers in it. Every classroom has a computer in it. So we're looking at like 37 computers. And before we started this, they were on constantly. You know, the old theory was don't ever turn off your electronic equipment, right? Always leave them on. Well, that theory is gone now. I mean, with the new equipment we have now, you can turn them on and off, no problem. So now we have a, a way of, of uh, saving energy by turning off the computers at night. And so that's what we're doing. So that's a kind of our summary of initiatives for the six months. And I think that all that can be, can be realized. Uh, for the six to two years, six months to two years, it's, it's uh, why don't you go on to the next one? We'll just shove on here. Um, we, we, when we were up at Cathedral at Sal's uh, place, we saw these water bottle refilling stations. We thought, we gotta get some of those. So we did some research into it. We have bottled water coming in that, f that for the teachers in the computer lab, we spend $1,800 a year on bringing in bottled water. So by putting in a, a, um, re a bottle refilling station, it'll cost us about $800. We're gonna save ourselves a lot. Again, like Sal said, we use some, we're gonna use some expense for water, but water is cheap right now. But the thing is, what we eventually wanna do is get rid of plastic bottles on campus as well. So have, people, have the kids bring in their own bottle to fill up, and that'll, that'll reduce our, our carbon footprint for, for plastic bottles as well. So um, replacing the grass in front, like Rose is talking about, we have, we just measured the other day, we have over almost 8,000 square feet of, of turf out in front of our church and school. The city, between the city and the county, 
we can get a $3.50 rebate on every one of those square footage. That gives us $27,000 that we can use to re-landscape our front and then use those funds to, to fund our other sustainability projects that we want to do. So it's just a great time to do it because the city just got on board with that. They, they had gotten out of the rebate program because they didn't have any money, but they just put some more money back into that program. So between the two agencies, we can, we can look at getting a, a lot of money back from that. Um, the other thing we have, we have printers in every classroom. And you know that, there's an ink cartridge cost to that every, every year, as well as the energy used in that. We have a, a really nice copier in the, in the office. And what we want to do is connect that to the printers, or connect that to the, cop, uh, to the computers in the classroom so the teachers can now print to the copier in the office and eliminate those extra printers in the classrooms. And we'll save ourselves about $1,500 a month on just uh, printer ink, ink cartridge and energy savings on that. The one thing we haven't done yet is, is uh, put the Echo Bee uh, thermostats in the church yet. We still have a problem with uh, getting Wi-Fi into our church. And so as soon as we get that uh, situated out, the Echo Bees will go in there and that will definitely save us some money on our HVAC uh, uh, energy uh, requirements there. Long term, uh, we had a, a Sullivan Solar come out, uh, Sullivan Energy come out a couple years ago and gave us these figures on installing solar panels. So the figures on there are probably a little old, they're two years old, but you can just see by putting in solar what it can save you. So it's something that we have in the, in the five year range of going solar on, on, our, uh, on our campus, because it really does save a lot of, lot of energy. Um, we're probably one of the only churches and schools that has a pool in their, in their what used to be the old convent. I guess when they, uh, they built a the school, they had to entice the, the, the nuns to come over and uh, use the pool. I, being, growing up and going to Catholic grade school, I can't envision a nun going in a being a bathing suit, so I'll let that go. <laughs> and the last thing there is, um, we started doing, uh, changing our windows, our, our you know, classrooms are 50 years old, so a lot of single pane, hard, you know, the old sliding type, hard to, hard to close, hard to lock. So we started replacing the windows a few years ago, and we got about three of the, uh, let me see, five of the classrooms, we have four more classrooms to do to replace the uh, double pane. And we, there is a heat factor involved in that because like uh, at St. Uh, Rita's there, it gets really hot. A lot of asphalt around our classrooms and in the summertime we're actually in you know, September, that's when our hottest time is, it gets to be really warm in those classrooms and we don't have air conditioning either. So to get the double pane in there to help with the, uh, the heat transfer and that, it would, it would really be really good. So that's something that we, it, it's going to cost us some money, and we just have to plan for that probably over the next five years. Okay, how we're going to how we're going to monitor this is um, we you know we have basically the finance team here just about we have Bill and Father and Rose and myself, and uh, we're going to be monitoring this. Bill will be would be taking in the invoices each month, and we'll we'll develop a plan on monitoring and how, how we're saving and how we're doing and how, how good or how bad we're doing it and we're meeting our goals. If we're not, then we got to just, you know, uh, um, make it a little bit better. So um, I know we're probably running out of time. So, okay, risk. The risk is of not doing it. If we don't do it, it's just going to cost more. Uh, one of the um, metrics that uh, this energy uh, electrical co company gave us is if we didn't replace the lighting with LEDs, what it would cost us next year, two years, and all that. And it just is amazing how much you're going to lose by not going to LEDs. So this, I mean, the risk of not doing these things is not only for <coughs> the protection of the environment and sustainability, but to what it's going to cost us in years to come if we don't do these things now. So the rewards are just fantastic. I think uh, just like everybody has, has, who's gone before us here is that um, it just makes it so much better. If we can teach our children 
how to recycle, how to, how to turn off lights when you get home. I mean, how many times have you gone home at night from work and every light in the house is on, the TV is on, the, the stereo is blasting, and the children are in the room with their earbuds on playing their video game, you know, and it's just all this energy being used. And what we want to teach the kids at, at school is to, when they go home, is to be able to turn the lights off and on, keep, keep it energy uh, in, your, in your focus of, of, re, of uh, reducing your energy requirement. So we would really like to get to zero uh, waste, just like St. Rita's. It's gonna be a long, long haul, but that's, that's the ultimate goal. So in May 2014, uh, the Pontifical Academy of Sciences held a workshop at the Vatican, and it pointed out the responsibility that humanity has towards protecting our natural resources and the need for sustainable advancements that uh, will preserve our natural resources, humanity, and all living things. Uh, we are committed as a school towards restructuring our facilities to making them environmentally friendly and instilling behavioral change to promote sustainability within our staff, with, with our students, within our community as well, and hopefully it'll even venture further out beyond that. Um, but furthermore, as the livelihood of Catholic schools continues to be at risk, you know, St. Columba, uh, this five-year plan is, is realistic for us, and uh, we're going to pursue it in the three phases as well. And it will allow us to cut down cost on energy, waste, and water so that we can continue not only to preserve our, our um, contribute to the preservation of our earth, but also to preserve the livelihood of our school so that we can exist for another 50 years, if not more. So thank you very much. <laughs>